on Capitol Hill, the former ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Yovanovitch, is testifying before lawmakers. Her appearance defies a White House order not to cooperate with the impeachment investigation. It comes as federal prosecutors have charged two associates of President Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani. Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman were arrested at Dulles Airport earlier this week as they waited to board one-way flights out of the country. Both foreign-born businessmen helped Giuliani dig up dirt on former Vice President Joe Biden and his son Hunter. They are charged with funneling foreign money to a super PAC that supports President Trump's re-election campaign, which is a violation of federal election law. Mr. Trump says he has no connection to them. Well, maybe they were clients of Rudy. You'd have to ask Rudy. I just don't know. Well, you have to ask Michael. Michael's my attorney, and you'll have to ask Michael. Prosecutors also accuse them of lobbying a Republican lawmaker to have Ivanovich removed from her post. Giuliani was frustrated that she was blocking his efforts to investigate alleged corruption by the Bidens. Also, according to multiple reports, the U.S. ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sondland, will comply with a subpoena from House Democrats and testify before lawmakers next week. Sondland was supposed to testify earlier this week, but was blocked from doing so by the Trump administration. Now, civilians are fleeing northern Syria as Turkish troops advance in Kurdish-controlled er areas. The offensive was made possible by the withdrawal of U.S. troops. It's opened a new front in Syria's eight-year-old war. Yeah, the rapid escalation comes only four days after President Trump privately greenlighted a, quote, small Turkish incursion in the area. Trump's military advisors disagree with the move. In fact, Trump says he is fulfilling a campaign promise to get out of the Middle East. But there is another dimension at play in all of this. Trump has business interests in Turkey. That is something he clearly admits. I have a little conflict of interest because I have a major, major building in Istanbul. And it's a tremendously successful job. It's called Trump Towers, two towers instead of one. Not the usual one, it's two. Well, we just got some breaking news, but I'm Barry Gordon. I don't know. You'll have to ask Barry. <laughs> <laughs> That's Kevin. <laughs> That's... And I'm Andre Cohen. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, okay. It's about someone else. We'll talk about it. All right. Right after this. <laughs> right after this. We didn't yeah. say you threw us. Magdalena. Mm -hmm. All right. All right that was right a, now. That was a sloppy opening because, because we have some breaking news. Like right now. Like right now. We were just shown this. We were just shown this. And Kevin McAleenan, you may not know who he is, but he is the acting director of Homeland Security, uh, quit. Right now. So the dominoes are just continuing to fall, aren't they? And, and sooner or later, Barry, and I know you have this feeling too. Yeah. It's not going to be an assistant. It's not going to be somebody who is acting. It's going to be somebody in the upper echelon of this is going to fall on this thing. Well, that's a pretty upper echelon. I mean, that's the role that well, John Kelly had I'm talking and about, Nielsen I'm had, talking so. about a Pompeo, a Giuliani. Yeah, a bar. Or, yeah. or a bar. One yeah. of those guys are going to have to get out of here. Well, I said last week, I think, that this is becoming a kind of all the president's men, those of us who are old enough to remember that, is that it was everyone around Nixon's orbit got trapped in it, I, I except for very, very few I don't, people. I don't and know. what's happening now is the, the, the split, the division is happening between those that are, you know, helping him, you know, bring the wagons in a circle, not very successfully, and those who are you know, Barry, uh, breaking with him. And looks people like, are breaking. It looks like we've been here in an all-the-presidents-men situation for a little while now. We're just becoming aware of it. That's probably true. Yeah. Um, and... We are still at a point, what amazes me, where this story moves so fast. We are still at a point where five, six stories are breaking a day. I know. You know, and I thought, I predicted that this would slow down. It would just become one story moving throughout it. And we still don't know how deep the Ukraine issue goes. No, we don't. We, and, I mean, Giuliani and Igor and what's the other guy's name? Lev? Igor and Lev, Lev, the two guys. Igor and Lev, yeah, I popped. think so, yeah. Yeah, there's a singing group for you, Igor and Lev. Yeah. We still don't know what they were up to. No. And 
here's here's the, the dumbest thing. Okay. You're pulling this whole thing off. Igor and Lev, where were they flying into? It, it just slipped my mind. They're flying into, let's say, the Ukraine. Mm-hmm. And Giuliani's flying into the Ukraine. You don't fly into the same place they're flying into. You fly into somewhere else, and then you fly in from there. Right. And then they were caught right after having dinner with Giuliani. Yeah. So. And they bought one-way tickets. You don't buy one-way tickets. You don't buy one-way tickets. No. You buy tickets to say you're coming back, and then you don't come back. That's the whole point. <laughs> so why not just walk up to the jail and do this and stick your hands out and ask for the handcuffs? You'd be a good spy. Or crook. I, <laughs> you'd be, I'm you'd not be a, very effective. I mean, to quote you know, Richard Nixon, I am. I not wouldn't a, have thought of these things, Dre. I, you know, I'm a reporter. This is my job to, <laughs> oh, okay. to look at all sides. I'm okay. not a. I am not a crook. Okay. The spy thing, I'm not going to comment on. At the ah. Let's just do it that okay. Way, you know. Uh, well, maybe when we get to local news, you'll have something yeah. to say about that. Talk about being a spy. Yeah, I uh, know. but I'm not. I mean, but I won't comment. By the on. way, we're we're going to be talking at you. Uh, today, because, and we're not going to be talking with you because apparently we have no Facebook, Actually, no phone. Actually, we are live on Facebook. Oh, now we are. We are live on Facebook. We're live on Facebook. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. Happy about that. So let us know that you're out there and uh, chat with us, and we will look forward to uh, talking with you then. I'm, oh, I'm glad about that. Good. I'm, I'm happy to. Yeah. So where are we on this whole impeachment thing? I mean, we predicted the whole way. We kind of predicted it so the whole where, way. I where, mean, the, where the, the, other, the other thing that I said was that public opinion would shift very quickly once Nancy Pelosi pulled the trigger. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, especially Democrats, were waiting for her to give a signal. And she's given that signal. And now we have, what, now four polls where the majority, or at least the plurality, of every one of those polls is in favor, not only of an impeachment inquiry, but, but of a removal of removal of the president of the United States. You that is that's heavy. You know, guys. I will tell that's you this really heavy. I thought the Democrats would have to educate the people more. Yeah. On the impeachment process before we got to the poll numbers where we are now. Well, I think but the, I think it just went because I think the transcript is undeniable. Everything else is wonderful that the Democrats are working and pushing and trying to do this and that. But I just think the transcript itself did the job that Mueller could not do. I think it's the other transcript. I think it's the president of the United States acting batshit crazy on TV every day. Well, and people are seeing it and they're going Look, there's just no excuse for what we are seeing right now. Well, I think that's true, too. And, and I think that there's an issue that, you know, it's interesting. I, I try to watch as many commentators and mm -hmm. pundits as I can. And I have been watching Chris Cuomo. And, and I think I said on the show that I was kind of admiring him and mm -hmm. his ability to play, you know, really lawyer and get it, get right, it right. people's arguments. But lately I have not been loving it because he's been taking this position or perhaps it's a devil's advocate position but it seems to be real with him that we don't have it yet that we need yeah, more or that it's not enough it's not enough that it's not enough and and I'm going to just ask a very very simple question because I th I would agree with him if we had a normal precedent uh, if we had a president like Bill Clinton or even George W. Bush or, you know, you, you pick whoever you want to pick. If we had a normal president, then you could say maybe we can find a way to deliver the message to him that what he's doing is wrong without impeaching him. Censure, uh, you know, a talking to, going up to the office. Mm -hmm. But you, folks, a meeting. we don't have a normal president. We have the opposite of a normal president. We have an abnormal president. We have an abnormally unhealthy human being in the White House. And he's not going to listen to persuasion. And if we censure him, is that going to change his behavior? Nothing that we can possibly do will change his behavior. Well, they're listening and to him. And ultimately, that 
is what the Republicans in the Senate are going to have to come to grips with. That's the next big threshold in this. And I don't think it happens until there is a trial. See, I but have, I think once there is a trial, I have or a on the brink of being a trial... I have a different viewpoint. I'm willing to hear it, but uh, yeah. What pushes this president out of office yeah. will always appear to be the Ukraine. Okay. But Syria is going to push this president out of office. Well, I, I, think, th I think there's a lot of validity in that. I, I think... Yeah. I think, I, I think Republicans will turn on the president because of what's, go what's going on in Syria. Yes. Now, you cannot, you have to recognize, you can't impeach him because of Syria. Well, that's why I said they will turn on Syria, but he will be forced out of office because of the Ukraine. You can, oh, but you could impeach him. Now, that last clip that mm -hmm. we showed before we went live here on the, on the cold open could be a way to get to him because of Syria. If any evidence came forward that he made this switch because of his business interests in Turkey, that it's still part of this transactional game. Or on the orders of a foreign that power. That he keeps playing, or on the orders of a foreign power. That's a little more science fiction, but possible. And if that happened, then yes, he would be gone in, well, a, in a heartbeat. But, understand but I agree with you that because they're so angry from a policy perspective, they can jump onto the Ukraine bandwagon and say, yeah, we got to get rid of him. I'm actually getting rid of him for a different reason in my mind. Right. Right. But yeah, he's not well, benefiting the United but, States but hold of up, America. Hold up, hold up. So today... It said that forces accidentally bombed uh, special forces, U.S. Force, special right. forces. Okay. I don't so know. So now he's got. Now, did anyone die? I don't know if there's a death toll yet. I was waiting for a death toll before I left work. It didn't come in. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine. Let's say there's a death toll. Mm -hmm. God forbid. Mm -hmm. And we'll pick a number. She's got ten on the on the card there, where it says ten minutes. Yeah. So let's say ten. Okay. What would we call that? What's the word for that? Benghazi. Well, yeah. That's the word for that. Yeah, that's So Benghazi. do we now hold hearings over that, where we get to the bottom of that, and we get to the bottom of that, and we start asking over and over that's... and over what happened there? Well, you're ahead of the game, because we don't know how he might react if that happened. You but, know, he says he's going to obliterate but, but we know Turkey's one thing. economy. We don't know what he would do. We do know how he's going to. We do know how he's going to react. How he always reacts the wrong way. Whatever the right way to react is, he's going to go the opposite direction. That's what he always does. When has he ever made the right decision? It's a little easy, but okay. I it's mean, a little easy because he does it all the time. He does do it all the <laughs> time. But on the other hand, he did make a comment. And he said that if anything were to go wrong, he would obliterate Turkey's economy. He did. I think if Americans were killed, he might be pushed to do something about it. Now, if he's not, then... He also said that if North Korea makes that statement Then you again, have to wonder who's popular. They will face in. fire and fury like never before. And then he... He did. Played Huggy Kissy with the guy. He did. And so, he's still doing it. And he's still doing it. I think the issue here is he is not about to say I was wrong to pull the troops. Right. And even today, he kind of, you know, doubled down on it. Or at his rally yesterday, he doubled down a little bit. And is that before or after the news came out about the special forces? Uh, the news about special forces came out today. I know. So, at so some did point he double down before or after? Before. At some point, he's got to respond to what's happened with the special forces. Yeah. So, and that, if there are deaths there, if there's a tragedy there... That is something that could move Republicans even more towards we told you not to do this. It could. And he could lose his biggest ally right now, which is Lindsey, Lindsey Graham. Graham. Yeah. And he could lose Lindsey Graham. But the tap dancing that Republicans are doing right now is, is almost funny. Yeah, they look like uh, it, Sammy it, Davis I, on a hot stove. Whoa. You know, I mean, it is. It, it is they do. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is unbelievable. I would have used a somewhat more modern reference, but yeah. You got it. <laughs> hey, they I know got who it. Sammy yeah, Davis okay. is. All right. <laughs>
And uh, I think we got to go to the local brief. All as right. much fun as we're having, but let's do it. And it's not about Sammy Davis either. Let's no. do it. Let's go. This is your local news brief for Friday, October 11th, 2019. Ryan Bell, a community activist, has announced his campaign for City Council District 6. Bell has worked for nonprofits throughout the entirety of his career. Through Pasadena based nonprofit Secular Student Alliance, he currently supports non religious student committees. In the past, he has served as the director for the People Assisting the Homeless. Bell's campaign website reads I'm running for Pasadena City Council because I see a chasm between the needs of the residents. The cries of our citizens are going unheard, or if they're heard, they're often ignored. As of now, Bell will run against Tamerlan Godley, former president of the Armory Center for the Arts. Current District 6 council member Steve Madison has also announced a run for the seat. District 5 Council Member Victor Gordo announced last week that he will run for mayor in the 2020 election. Gordo, who grew up in Pasadena after emigrating from Mexico with his parents at age 5, has held a seat in the city council for 19 years. In a Pasadena Now article, former mayor Bill Bogart voiced his support for Gordo, saying, As someone who worked closely with Victor over the years, I appreciate his ability to hear differing viewpoints, then build a coalition that has strong support. Bogart, who is Pasadena's longest-running mayor, is acting as Gordo's co chair and treasurer. In the same Pasadena Now article, Gordo says, too many Pasadenans believe they are unheard at the top of City Hall. Gordo was running against current mayor, Terry Tornick, as well as candidate Major Williams. At a public meeting on Wednesday, October 10th, students, parents, and concerned citizens confronted the PUSD school board and local leaders about school closures. Pasadena school board member Kimberly Canay cited lower birth rates as the precipitating factor that led to the closures and consolidation of Roosevelt, Franklin, and Jefferson schools. Canay emphasized that the PUSD board put much consideration into the plan before voting on the closures. Despite the apparent finality of the decision, speakers expressed their grief and looked for solutions. Renee Gonzalez, a parent cited charter schools as an issue and called for the PUSD board to reverse course, stating, we will not go down without a fight. So go ahead and ask. Well, I do want to talk about the, the school closures, but um, I was very surprised uh, to see Bill Bogart come out that early. He's a very cautious man, and I was very surprised to see that. So do you want to give any background on that? I think it might be early to those who are just becoming aware of the announcement. Okay. I don't think this is something that just happened a week ago between Bill and Victor. I okay. think this is something that has been discussed, gone over, gone over again and again and again. Um, Did Bill seek him out to run? Six months ago, roughly, there were rumors of a meeting at a restaurant where Bill and Victor were seen uh, with a political consultant. Um, so even back then. FR? There, there, <laughs> there were already. Uh, <laughs> Are those the initials? You're a wise, you're a wise man. Of even the then, political consultant? Even, yeah. even then, there were already rumors of a, uh, not even rumors, of rumblings yeah. of a Gordo campaign. I will tell you what, though. So Gordo comes out to say, hey, I'm running. And then to come out just a few days later, a week later, whatever the timing was. And if you read that article, if you saw that article, there is no quote in there from Victor Gordo. Mm -hmm. There's a quote from Bill Bogard. Yeah. That has a punch right in the mouth to the mayor. Yeah. That is, that is a hard punch. And I think Terry has to respond. So what, uh, what is the basis for it? For the run or for Bogart? For Bogart's punch to the mouth. Well, can we bring up the Bogart quote again? I don't know if they can, but if you read that Bogart quote, it looks to me, I don't know if we're on the air right I now. I think we are. I think we are. I'm just going to keep I, going. I think it's a monitor issue. Okay. If you look at that Bogart quote, yeah. the Bogart quote, while it says that everything that Victor's great at, it also is highlighting everything that people have said about Terry Tornick. Okay. So the capsule, encapsulate that for me. Well, when you go, and you've run before, and you go, I write, I'm your campaign manager, and I say something like, Barry Gordon is a uniter. Mm -hmm. What does it say about the other guy? Okay. You know, I mean, there were some shots fired, you know, in this thing. Some serious shots fired. And, and like I said, I think that Terry is going to have to... 
But if you could Come give back. me two specific issues that Bogard and Terry would clash on, what would they be? Other than style. Because God knows, you know, I mean, Tornick and Bogard have think, very different styles. And Gordo's style is very similar to Bogart's. Well, look, he's, he's very much a Bill, consensus builder. I think builder. Bill no had a kind of, uh, we're going to build a certain way. And I think Terry's idea, which does follow the times somewhat, is we need more housing. And I think there's a clash in that alone. Now, that's not necessarily a style, it's policy. I don't know if Bill would have gone for Space, space Bank necessarily. He could have mm -hmm. in, in some ways. Some of the things like Desiderio, yeah. uh, you know, near the bridge, I think Bogart probably would have gone a little slower than, than Terry Tornick went. So I think some of those things, you know, are, are clashes. Or, and I don't know, I'm tossing it out there because I don't know. Okay. It could be as simple as nobody ever ran against Bill Bogart. And then Terry Tornick announced he was going to, and that's when Bill resigned. We don't know how he took that. I mean, it, it, mm -hmm. this, this could be a lot of things, but I will point out what this means to the city. Okay. All the rest of what I just said was speculation. What this means to the city is that in the Bill Bogart era, no councilman ever stepped up and challenged the mayor for his seat. That's right. Except for Terry Tornick. That's right. But now... After just one term, and that was at the end of Bill's run, after just one term, you have an opponent for the mayor that's on the council. And it's not somebody who has to give up his seat to run. You do. Now, Pasadena, I believe, uh, of course, we haven't been electing that long. Mostly it was appointed right. but no, mayors. Well, they but, did, they did but elect in the 20s We also. support incumbency a lot. We do. We in do. this city, the last we're, thing. we're very much a kind of a status quo. Let's not make waves, right. city. Katie Knack How, lost a bill preparing in the nineties. Right. How does this impact it? I mean, are we going to see a rough and tumble race? We're going to see a rough and tumble race. Jackie Robinson has an exploratory committee. Really? And if she gets residency in Pasadena, she'll be in the race probably. Wow. Which means... Well, that split could well help that Terry. That split could well help Terry. Or, yeah. or, and I don't, or, mm -hmm. it is not completely, it's not the obvious outcome that everybody would assume to happen, obviously. Everybody will assume that it will be, Vic, um, that it will be Terry against one or the other in a runoff. Here's the hypothetical. Okay. What if it were Terry and, I mean, what if it was Victor and Jackie in a runoff? That's a really good question. See, what if she got the black vote, black woman's vote, and he got the Latino vote, mm -hmm. and they both carried their former respective districts in other part of this, parts of the city, um, that's one uh, outcome that has to be considered. Terry, well, are, we, are we yet um, a majority-minority city? If we are not. I didn't think so. But that, that's why I asked that. So but, where does the white vote go? But <laughs> when, does it, it go to Terry or you does would, it split three ways? Well, you, it could split three ways. Also consider this. Mm -hmm. You and I have done a lot of election coverage together over the years. Yeah. I always think of this when people bring up that kind of demographic. That's assuming that the vote would match the demographics of the city. And it doesn't always. And it doesn't always. It doesn't and that's, always. That could be that's a right. big part of that issue for the incumbent and for the challengers. Right. Um, Major Williams and Jason Harden, who are also both running. Um, well, that's th those are spoilers. Th I mean, those, those are, are spoilers. Yeah, they're they're not going they're, anywhere. Those are spoilers, especially if it's a race either between Tornick and Gordo or between Tornick, or, Gordo, and Robinson. It, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not look, going anywhere. What you have to understand is that Gordo is not the incumbent mayor but he is a sitting city council member. Right. And that will bring a certain amount of vote and a percentage of the vote to Victor Gordo. Mm -hmm. um, I will still say, it always favors the incumbent in Pasadena. We are very early into this thing. I sound like Chris Cuomo. And at this point, it would still fa probably favor the incumbent. Probably. But I, I also think, though, that, that 
there has been a long tradition through Northwest, but also other areas of a very, very strong African-American presence. And that has, at least a lot of the time, spilled over onto the council. Right. There has not been a terribly strong Hispanic presence. Um, and basically, it's been Victor. And, well, and not a lot before well, that. So is it time now it, for a, it that could, presence to be well, not more, only, more elevated not only in terms could it be of the time politics? Up for that presence, but consider this, and this takes you right to the other thing you said you wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. Those parents whose schools are being closed, yeah. those are Latino parents. Those are people of color. That's right. Those are people that Gordo did go to a town hall and speak to just the other night mm -hmm. and reminded them that when he came into the school district, he spoke Spanish and he did not know how to speak English. Yeah. And Victor Gordo that's sat a, on the city that's council. That's story. He sat on the city council for 19 years for a reason. Yeah, that's a bio. And, and There's no question about that's that. That's a bio. Yeah, it is. And so the, that, those school closures, that will come into play in this election. One last question and then we got to go. I'm sure. running a little over. But sure. If Robinson does not run, mm -hmm. where do you think the black vote goes? Victor Gordo. You do think so? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Victor Gordo, but I think there's also a chance that Major Williams and James Harden. But if Terry is stronger with housing, isn't that a major issue for African Americans? Are either one of them stronger with the housing? Because the issues we have and the calls for rent control have come under this council, which they both sit on. That's right. So this could come down to whoever is willing to say, I'll have a discussion on rent control. Yeah. And neither one of them have ever said that sitting on the council or called for that. That's true. What about Jackie? Jackie's whole thing when she ran last time was raising minimum wage and rent control. And rent control. So... Well, stay tuned, folks, because this is going to be pretty exciting it's on the local side. We're going to have a lot to talk about. It is. And on the national side, a lot happening next week uh, in the uh, inquiry. And we'll be here to, uh, I won't be. You'll be here You're to not talk be here about it. No, next week I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee. What That's the hell my you... last trip. Hang on. What my the... last comic. What in the wide world of sports Fan are you Boy... doing in Knoxville, Tennessee? Fan Boy Expo. I'll be doing the Donatello thing. Anyway. In Knoxville, Tennessee? Knoxville, Tennessee. Well, so, guys. Hope you got your overalls ready, pal. I will see you in two weeks. He will see you in one. I'm Barry Gordon. And I'm Andre Coleman. This is News Wrap, live at 5.